Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Breakfast at Tiffany's. I am your hostess, Tiffany Almazon, and I am happy to be here today. Happy that it is such an amazingly gorgeous day today. I had to be outside because it is so pretty. And then, I don't know if you can hear, but there's a random noise. A high, a high pitched, kind of fast chirping sound. I don't know. It seems like it's coming from my neighbor's house. But anyway, so I hope that's not bothering you too much. And that's a little crooked. You ever be like, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, welcome to the show today. So today I wanted to share with you what I'm eating. So I want to give you a recipe every week, uh, a healthy one. So that by the end of a year, you will have 52 yummy recipes that you can be eating. So here it is, leftovers. Okay, this may not look like much, but I don't know, mud, but it's amazingly delicious. Okay, so this has got a basil pesto recipe in there, um, and then a quick cheese recipe that is just made from cashew, cashews, um, nutritional yeast, water, salt, and I think that's about it, just kind of blend it up. And then it's got mushrooms in it. We've got some amazing portobello and shiitake mushrooms in here. Uh, that have been marinated in olive oil and um, soy sauce. I use liquid aminos, but I also use soy sauce. You can use soy sauce. You can use um, coconut aminos if you like to. You can use tamari, whatever works for you. <clears throat> and then the onions, mushrooms are laid in a you know glassware baking dish. You pour your your cream, your cheesy cashew cheese on. Then you pour. Oh, there the sound is gone. Ah, now I can think. <laughs> so you lay your onions, your mushrooms, then you pour over your cheese, and then you pour on the, the basil pesto, and then you add all kinds of random veggies on top. So I put in broccoli, I put in carrots, I put in, um, there's bell peppers in here. There's, oh, it wanted tomatoes, but I didn't have like actual tomatoes, so I used sun-dried tomatoes that I soaked for a little bit in there. Mm, capers. I've got a whole bunch of capers in here that are really good too. Um, I think if I can see what else is in here. This is like a mushroom stew. Super savory and yummy. And then once it's warmed up, you would throw some chopped parsley and pine nuts on top and eat this. This is going to be my breakfast. So what I'm doing is this is leftover from the fridge. So I'm going to pop this in the dehydrator at 110 degrees for about a, maybe an hour. I'm trying to rush it. Probably would do 105 ordinarily. I'm trying to rush it a bit. Um, to warm it up and that's gonna be breakfast it's super yummy um, so there you have it I will post the actual recipe um, below so you will have it and then you can make this on your own and I've got my dogs out here with me too so if the camera is shaking <laughs> that would be why <laughs> mm, and it's so good I mean this is like one of those oh, so just hits home when you need something rich and, and dense and savory with flavors that I've never really tasted together like this before. I've never had like a cheese and pesto put in together with soy sauce. It's amazing. So there you go. You're going to have to try that. It takes, uh, it took, I did it, um, I put the whole glass bake, baking dish in the dehydrator. You can just put it right on the bottom, take some shelves out, put it, trays out and put it right on the bottom. And it cooked at 110 for, I did it for three and a half hours. I went in and stirred it up one time too, just to keep the veggies on top moist. And that really was helpful. Um, you could do it for less time, maybe, you know, two hours would be okay too. Um, I just wanted it cooked a little bit longer or uncooked a little bit longer. So that was what I did, but it was amazing. Okay. Another thing on my list, I always want to talk about three things. So there was your recipe. Third thing um, on the list was having nothing to say. So that was my challenge this morning. <laughs> I was like, what do I talk about? <laughs> so do you ever have that? You're like, okay, I got nothing to say. Yeah, it happens, right? It happens to me. And, and the funny thing is, is this is like my first official episode at Saturdays at 10 a.m. I committed to it last week and so I'm like I gotta do it and then you have a brain for you to do right so here I am anyway still doing it because I've committed to it and I'm excited for this show and I want to um, I want to connect with you all and I want to bring you value and I want to see what we can do to have some fun and live healthier lives right and bring people together so 
my third thing third thing was I was write it down and then I start the live video and you can't see what you wrote so I'm like what was my third thing <laughs> oh yeah the challenge with no challenge so to kind of give you an update on my health journey um I've been doing maybe this last month has been probably 75 um 75 percent raw not the percentage that I want to be at some of it was a deliberate choice you know for some traveling we did and some some healthy meals we wanted to eat and sample and enjoy but not exactly raw they weren't junk but not raw I did have some junk food but here's the thing I like challenges and so for a good chunk of like nine months of last year I was kind of on a challenge some were longer than a month um, I had 87 day challenge I did back to back two of those had month long challenges always something that I was working on I did <clears throat> and it was really great for me super successful kind of kept me on track and brought me together with other people too and I was always sharing on Facebook about it and I was focused on it and then even over the holidays it was great you know everybody else is eating all their meats and their yummy Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners and I was eating raw and no meat no added sugar no processed flours no breads no none of that kind of stuff and it was good because I had that focus and I was clearly not eating what everybody else was and so it was always there at the forefront and then comes January and I know a lot of people are, are going to the gyms and all in January but that's not a big thing for me I don't do the New Year's resolutions and so I was like I got this right I'm just gonna keep doing what I've been doing I'm just gonna do more raw right and then I was like ugh, something happened <laughs> so that's why I'm only at 75% um, I need that focus to keep me going so that's partly why I'm excited about this show too because it's gonna be good for me is it's gonna help keep me on track because um, I'll be focusing on the good food I gotta have something yummy to share with you every week you know it's to what I'm eating for you know for breakfast and I don't always eat breakfast foods for breakfast in case you didn't know oh, it smells so good um, but I need that I need that focus so I also have a joy to your health group uh, you're welcome to, to join that as well if you want to be around some other people who are eating healthy and it's not any restrictions of you have to be a cer certain type of diet or certain type of lifestyle this is just if you want to get healthier than where you are right now or you want to maintain where you are great this is a group to be around we share recipes we can ask each other questions we talk about our fitness too if there's the, the exercise or like people like me that not really a fan of that like what do we do to get moving um, all that kind of fun stuff we're just there in a great group to support each other on that so you're welcome to join just comment below and I'll, I'll add you to that group too um, but it's been in a crazy month for me, so I don't really know what to do about it yet. So I'm open for ideas, like how to live this lifestyle without having it be a challenge. Because it's so, um, you take things for granted. Like my honey and I went to a vegan restaurant last night and oh, food was delicious, but I didn't get, like I don't even know what all was in there. I stopped asking questions because I assume it's a healthy place, right? Um, it's gonna all be okay but not necessarily right so the recipe even said the ingredients on the menu said it was gonna have um, green and yellow squash noodles well then I get this bowl and it they may have been made out of squash but they weren't like actual squash that had just been peeled or spiralized and then you know cooked and put in the bowl it it was processed noodles and I'm like what? I mean, that's not what the recipe, you know, that's not what the menu, you know, said, so maybe they changed it, but it just reminded me that I didn't even ask the questions. I didn't even ask, like, what, what is this? And there were some ingredients, there were some um, Japanese uh, spices uh, and seasonings that I didn't know what they were. I didn't know how they made the, the juice, the broth that this uh, fettuccine was in. I didn't even ask the questions. And I'm like, well, that was kind of dumb, because... You know it's good good relatively speaking but what all is in it you know I don't eat I found another version of the menu I looked online and it said it was spinach um, fettuccine and I know that's got processed stuff in it too and it's all processed it's not raw for one thing and it's not just spinach it also has other stuff in it because I've looked at spinach fettuccine but 
but ask the question. <laughs> like, I'm not vegan. I'm not vegetarian. I am not 100% um, plant-based, you know, either. Um, so I have to ask questions everywhere I go, and, and I've gotten kind of lazy about it in a sense, you know? I mean, like, when something gets so, like, you get so used to it, and there's not, like, a challenge that I'm trying to accomplish or succeed with, what do you, you know, how do you maintain it day to day? Because this is like my lifestyle. I want to be a raw plant-based eater. And it's not a diet. It's not like a short-term thing. But, you know, like how do you continue to remind yourself to ask questions and to be cognizant of where you're going and what you're eating? Um, and remind yourself that this is a choice that you've made and you want to keep making this choice every single day. You don't want to just stop, you know, because it's so easy that the whole little was that creeping incrementalism you guys have experienced that right well I feel like that's what's happening in a sense here is because it's so easy to slip and it's not intentional it just because maybe because of lack of enough intention lack of enough focus it starts to slip I don't know it's like I can eat anything I want it's not you know there's not a specific prescription that I'm on or a specific allergy that I have that I can't have these things or have to eat these things this is my choice and so when it's your choice it's like oh well I could choose to not eat it today right you know I could choose to have some french fries and I'm like well what's wrong their potatoes you know so I need some thoughts you guys have ideas on um, what to do and sorry for not saying hello. I can't really like see um, who's all watching the, the, with the sun coming through. It's, it's rather bright. So that's just kind of why I've been um, ignoring you. Not, not on purpose, sorry. So hi everyone who's watching. <laughs> Try and get close and see. So um, Pat and Denise and Angela, and Linda and Gwen. Oh my gosh, I'm Roseanne. Wow, hi everybody. <laughs> sorry that I haven't been saying hi. Um, say hi. Say where you're watching from if you're still, you know, on with me live. Um, and you're welcome to anybody who wants to jump on with me live. I would love to have, like, you could have, like, the two of us up, you know, side by side. It would, would be kind of cool. So, but there you have it. There's my challenge. It's been not having a challenge. And so I need to figure out what I'm going to do about it. Because um, so I've had some some things uh, this last month that aren't, I even had potato chips because that's, like, my downfall. I've had potato chips because I could, right? And I feel like crap afterward. Let me just say that. So I've also had... Um, some cooked grains and I eliminated those months ago because I didn't feel good anymore after I was eating them at first when I transitioned you know from a standard American diet um, it was okay that was a saving grace for me it kind of helped me transition but it got to a point where grains were just like ugh, sitting in my stomach I didn't feel good you get this this fog that you don't know is this fog that's there until it's not and then you realize what it was um, and so I've lost that fog as long as I eat raw minimal cooked things but they can't be cooked processed things um grains no i'm um, hi there this is larkin you can't see but he's here saying hi with his toy there you go my man um so i've been learning a lot of things that really I'm not feeling well when I eat, so it's not just being raw for the heck of being raw. It's being raw because that's how I feel good. And the, the fire that's inside of your head when you're eating raw is amazing. Like the ideas that you have, this is Nicholas now. <laughs> the ideas and the way your brain just works and you just feel so much more alive and connected to life. And I didn't feel disconnected before, but now that I've ex kind of ex been experiencing this, eating you know much healthier eating majority you know raw I, I easily start to notice when I slip up you know like we had this bowl of um, it was cracked freaka bowl so um, I never had cracked freaka before but it's a grain it was a whole you know it was a whole grain just you know cracked um, and so I had that in a bowl of cooked obviously with um, other veggies and stuff it was really yummy bowl it's very delicious but I felt lousy afterward I was like it just sat in my stomach I didn't feel good the next day here's the thing next day I was a crab so was my husband from what he ate um, but it was it was healthy you know but I still felt bad the next day and so they know then it, it you get it out of your system and you start eating you know the right things again and, and you can get over it quicker um, but it's an immediate feeling as to how 
your body responds to it once you learn to start listening you know more so I've done a lot of that this past month so you can say it's been a success in that I've had a lot of checks and balances I've, I've eaten things seen how I felt um, I've even you know been in the middle of eating things and can see how I feel so it's been really validating for me why I need to eat raw plant-based why it's been so good for me and I feel so amazing and it's what my body loves and my brain loves and I just need to figure out how to keep it going now that it's a lifestyle and not a challenge you know? so there you have it that's what I'm sharing with you just some some things that I've been dealing with um, it's not all perfect on this journey it's not like I just become this uber healthy person and life is so easy and I don't have any challenges I do you know it can be a pain in the butt because there's nowhere you can go that's raw. I mean, Las Vegas has zero raw places to eat. There are a couple vegan places that have raw things on the menu, um, and they're really good. And then you get sucked into eating the, the vegan things. It's just like that are cooked, but even not necessarily the healthiest for you, right? Um, but there's actually the two raw cafes we had in town closed two years or something ago. So there's like zero raw. So really it's cooking a lot at home <laughs> and reading only certain things on the menu but even if you get a salad it's like what's in your dressing you know um, you, you have to question everything when you're out and about and that can that is like the challenge is to remember that you always have to be asking questions always have to be aware of it um, oh hey Alicia how are you and uh, so that's why I gotta get better at this month and we're already into the month a bit. What is today? The the tenth. So I have 18 more days to keep it keep it going for this month. But I really want to get to a much higher percentage of being raw. I guess maybe I might need to turn it back into a challenge. I want to do much closer to 100 percent, 75 percent. I'm not feeling well enough consistently enough um, to be good at to, to like 75 percent. So maybe that's what it is. I can measure a target. It won't necessarily be. A challenge but it'll just be tracking my progress there you go if I talk it out long enough right I come up with my answer I think that's what I'm gonna do and I'll figure out what I'm gonna track how I'm gonna track it on a daily basis because writing down all of my food and stuff that I eat that's not gonna work I mean does anybody really do that could you like sit down and write down everything you ate every snack you had all every for consistently for more than two days in a row I mean nobody's gonna do that right at least not me anyway um, so I don't want to do that I had to figure it out. Um, eyeball my percentages every day. Just kind of be like, hey, how much did I eat that was cooked? Hmm. I'm going to check that out. So that, that was at 75% just as a random guess um, last month. I'm going to just then shoot for 80% the rest of this month. There you go. I think that's going to work. So <clears throat> that's my plan. And I keep holding this book because I was going to share this with you too as my third thing. My really real third thing instead of just saying I have nothing to say today because <laughs> I figured it out um, can always throw something something together right so this book is backwards but so you can see the color and all it's influencer the new science of leading change and I am a big believer in self-help personal development books and this book is flipping fantastic get this book read this book it's got five authors so don't ask me who the author is I can um, post a screenshot of it or something if you guys want that information but just look up influencer on Amazon you'll see it and it's the green stuff um, it is amazing how do they describe it um, like they the one situation was the the guinea worm how to stop people how to, how to eliminate it, um, how to um, reduce, um, what do they do? They, they, these massive changes that people are able to make with big things, it's like you've got limited resources, small budget, and you make these massive changes. You know, it's like, how do you do this? You've got these hardened criminals that go to Delancey Street, you know, and now they're, they're in, working in restaurants, and now they've, they're learning um, social skills and, and jobs and talents, and, and how do you do that when these are hardened criminals that have been in jail? Um, and there's, there's nothing but themselves making this choice to move forward. It's like, how are they doing that? It's because these influencers, you know, how are these massive changes being made with people? Um, and it's fantastic book. So read it. I'm in a kind of in a book club group about it too. So we talk about it every week and that's been a lot of fun too. But let's see where I'm on right now is chapter six, but 
here's the thing. So it's, it's, there are six elements in being a good influencer, and it's just really not what you think at all, but it's so cool. There are three things. There's the personal, the social, and the structural. Um, and in personal, there's you help them love what they hate as the motivation. The ability is help them do what they can't. That's on the personal side. Then on the social side, the motivation is you provide encouragement, and the ability is you provide assistance. And then the structural side is motivation-wise, it's change their economy, and ability is change their space. And you have to incorporate all six of these things into whatever the project is, whatever the issue is, whatever the challenge is that you're tackling in order to get that massive change across. Because um, you can't do it yourself if you try and just like hammer it into somebody's head. This is what you gotta do or why aren't you doing your job? You know, it's like get them to do it on their own by being an influencer. Um, it's fantastic. This is just a phenomenal book. So 10 pages of a good book a day. I highly recommend this one. And that is my official third thing for you guys. And it's so beautiful out here. I could just sit here talking all day. <laughs> but I'm going to let you go. I'm going to go throw my breakfast in to the dehydrator. And by the time it is nice and warm, I will be hungry and ready to eat. And I'm going to go off and enjoy the rest of Saturday with my honey. He has got a, a rare day off today. So we're going to go have some fun. So what are you doing today? To have some fun and are you reading any really good books that I should know about because I have a list I would love to add to what I should be reading next so please share that with me and I will see you next week with another recipe um, and three more three things a recipe and two other things for a total of three that we will be talking about next week so if you've got questions please share them if you have comments share those too I'll check back in and and see what comments have come through um, and I will see you next Saturday same channel here 10 a.m. for another episode of Breakfast at Tiffany's. This is your hostess, Tiffany Almazan, signing off and wishing you a fabulous life of joy today. Bye for now.